Audrey Lambert here, and for those of you who do not know me, I'm a real estate agent who specializes in buying and selling homes in good old Orange County, California. And today we're going to talk about the home sale capital gains exclusion, and that's section 121. So listen up, I'm getting a lot of questions about that recently. Okay, we got two disclaimers. Disclaimer number one is that I am not a tax expert or a CPA or a financial guru or an investor. Okay, so I'm just a lowly real estate agent <laughs> and I'm just sharing you with you some of the uh, information experience that I've that I've been through and that I've that I've actually done some research on. And I will tell you my number one regret in all of my housing investing is that I sold my properties. So this whole video is about, oh, you know, this you know, whatever capital gains deduction is such a great thing. And it is, don't get me wrong. It is, but also understand that there's another side to it. Okay. And that is every time that you go to sell a property, there is transactional costs. There's also, you're losing your wealth creator, right? Your house. And if I could go back in time and change anything that I've done in my investing, it would be try to hang on to those properties. Oh my God, I just think about it sometimes and it makes me so sick. Like, why did I do that? And the reason why I did that is because I, I fell in love with that $500,000, $250,000 capital games exemption. And wow, it's so fun to get this money. But you've really got to think long term when you're buying and selling houses. And once again, I'm not the expert. You know, you're going to want to talk to people that are wiser than me, obviously. And you also have to understand your position, meaning, you know, your risk tolerance and, you know, just your financial strength and holding more than one property or two properties, three properties, so on and so forth. Cause there will always be a market turn, whether it be now or 10 years down the road. And you just have to have the mindset to go through it, but you will always be rewarded for taking risks in, in housing, right? <laughs> of course, you're going to want to buy the right property, but understand once again, I really regret selling all my properties. We, I would be in a much different position than I am today. Okay. So those are my disclaimers. <laughs> so let's talk about qualifying for that exemption. So this exemption is for people who have lived in their property for two out of the five years. Okay. So they have to claim their property as their primary residence. Now that's really important because some people rent their properties out or they buy a second property and it's not going to work. It has to be your primary residence and you can check with your tax or CPA person to, to show how they're filing your taxes, but your property needs to be your primary residence and you have to live with it for at least or live with it live in it for at least two years now if you're single and you go to sell your property you have a two hundred and fifty thousand dollar tax deduction you can take against the capital gains in your property okay if you are filing jointly you get five hundred thousand dollar tax deduction once again you're going to have to check with your cpa to make sure this is going to be a theme for this video i'm not the tax person but it does state in the irs government website and i'll post it right here for you I've got this directly off their site uh, section 121 states that you get a two hundred fifty thousand dollar capital gains deduction if you're single and a $500,000 capital gains deduction off your taxes um, if you lived out of your property or lived in your property for at least two out of the five years. In the back in the day, back in 2003, what I would do is I would buy a property, live in it one year, and then I would go buy another property, claim that as my primary residence, and then move back into property number one. So I have two years of living that as my primary residence. And then I'd go buy another property number, property number three. And then I'd move back into property number two to get that two year, you know, whatever the window so I can claim that gain. Okay. So I did that for about five different properties, the market tank, and that's a whole other story. So I did sell those properties and I, I was able to take that capital gains deduction every two years. Okay. So you can't take it um, one year after the next it has to be within a two year window of time. And I was confusing, but if you go look at their website, once again, I will link it down below. It is really important to understand that these, you have to live in the property and you have to claim it as your primary residence and you have to live in it within two years. There is one exception. However, um, there is a suspension of the five year period of test. If the resident has to, is a military and has to go overseas. So they do give you a break and that's also linked below. So you can read more about that, which I mean, that's fair, right? So let's give you an example of how this works. Okay. So let's use a rough number, a million dollars. So you bought a house for a million dollars, you put $200,000 worth of upgrades into it. Now let's be clear on this. This is, 
you know, landscaping, you know, features in the property. This does not include furniture. It does not include services. It's not your gardener that comes every month or your pool. You can't use that. It has to be upgrades that adds value to the property. So you have $1.2 million into this property by the time you bought it and the upgrades, and then you go to resell it two years later, you're claiming this as your primary residence. And let's say you sell it for 1.7. So you have 1.2 into it, you sell it for 1.7 and you got a $500,000 gain. Now, if you are filing jointly, you get all that money free. So you get that $500,000 completely free and clear, which is great. I mean, where in the world do you, can you make profit like that and completely free and clear? Great idea. You're real happy. However, if you're, you know, filing singly, you only get $250,000 of tax free and the other is subject to capital gains tax. Okay. So that's kind of how that works. And of course, once again, I'm going to recommend you talk to your CPA about the details of that in your particular situation. However, it's a great, I want to say, um, profit for you, but I'm always going to recommend always that if you're going to sell your primary residence and you're using this as an investment, and this is a strategy you're taking. The big question is what are you going to do with that money? That's going to give you the same ROI or return on your investment. And once again, not an expert in this investing business, but you know, people get really tied up into and fall in love with that idea of getting all that money, but where are you going to put it? Are you going to put it in the stock market? Are you going to buy another house? Are you downsizing? Is this a really smart move? Is it better to, you know, create wealth and generational, you know, legacy kind of stuff? You know, I don't know. I'm not the one to answer it, but I do know that I made the mistake of getting too wrapped up into the profit of it. And if I was able to hold on to those properties, which at the, you know, back in the day, I probably could have, I would have been in a much better wealth position if I would have just tried to really save those properties. So do your due diligence and really wise, I mean, seek wise counsel, really important. Okay. So what is capital gains tax? Like what, like what's the percent? And if you ask anybody, they're all like, mm. it's because it's a moving number. Okay. On average, it's 15%. I'm going to, once again, here's the capital gains right off the IRS website. I'll link the, the link down below in the description box. So you can read more about it really depends on how much money you're making. It depends. <laughs> on your tax, it depends on a lot of things. Let's talk about those investments that you make when you buy your property. So you buy your property for a million dollars, you upgrade it $200,000 worth of upgrades and that's great. But I'm going to warn you because I've been through many IRS audits. I'm the IRS audit expert, sort of, kind of, <laughs> but, and, and by the way, it's all been good because I was very detailed in my receipts. So if you're going to claim those upgrades, you need to have receipts and documentation showing that that you have those upgrades into the property. You can't just write on a note. Oh yeah, I did about 200. You need to have receipts. So when you're investing in a property and you're adding value to your property by throwing your money into it and investing into it, you need to keep really close records. Okay. I, I keep this file and anytime I have a receipt, I just throw it in there. So if you do get audited, which, you know, it's likely if you're taking that big of a deduction, you need to prove that you do have that 200,000 or whatever the investment in, is into your house. Super important. Let's talk about the pro of this section 121 in the IRS code. So obviously what in the world can you do to make that kind of money and not pay capital gains tax? And honestly, there's nothing out there. So you don't know how long this is going to stay in effect. It's a huge, huge tax savings for people who are investing into properties and need to move it into another property because they've outgrown theirs. Right? Um, so that's a pro, a definite pro. And that's the only one I can think of. <laughs> But the con is you go sell your property and now you're potentially moving into another property. So you're losing your tax base unless you're 55 and older. Okay. Um, you're also potentially in this marketplace selling a house and maybe moving into another house where you have to have a loan on it, which your loan payments a little bit higher. Okay. And the third thing that I think is a negative is that you're losing your wealth creator, meaning that I always look at properties, especially in my neighborhood as a tool to create and generate, you know, we'll just say income, cash flow, and you know, the more properties you have, the more assets you have, the stronger you're going to be financially moving forward. So what I've learned in my real estate career is that if I want to go buy another property, I'm going to refinance my house 
Roop, take the money out. Now let's say I refinance my house and I can take, let's say 500,000. We'll just use that number because I like it. You also have to realize is that 500,000 that I am taking out of my property if I refinance, that too is tax free. People don't know that. So, okay, cool. So I'm going to keep my primary residence. I'm going to take $500,000 out. I'm going to go buy another property that maybe is bigger or maybe I think is going to, you know, appreciate it a higher value. And then I'm going to rent my primary residence out and the rent is going to pay for the second I took out on the house and, you know, my primary mortgage, you know, if it's not paid off and then they're going to pay for the appreciation in my primary residence. So now I have two properties two properties and it just continues. So understand that power of owning property. I always say that owning real estate is the backbone of America and you really can't go wrong. Obviously, you know, choose a good property, choose a good area, do your homework, but it's always worked for me. And I've, I, I would just highly recommend you do the same. Just hang on to it if you can. Okay. In closing, I know you guys like me, don't you? Here I am, probably the only real estate on camera here telling you not to sell your house. <laughs> it's called establishing credibility. See what I'm doing? But no, really, I, I just think you need to understand the cons of selling your house. And I love this capital gains deduction. I mean, it's just an incredible savings and a credible, incredible opportunity for a lot of people out there. But you also have to understand, you know, the downsides to it. You know, you're losing your wealth creator. Um, also, one of the things I didn't mention as a con in, you know, the video that you just listen to is that there's a lot of hassle costs and there's closing costs when you go to sell a, pri a property there's transactional costs and there's moving costs and there's paying the net costs and and it's very disruptive and when you go move to another property it takes three to four months before you're actually situated and it's kind of a lonely process too so it's not as you know it's not as easy as it sounds okay so that's it for me today once again you know do your due diligence and if you got any value out of this video, please subscribe to my channel and smash that like button and do not hesitate in contacting me with any of your questions or concerns. Thanks so much and I'll see you in the next video.